Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to use Xtool templates to make a great project on Xtool Creative Space. So this should be a rather short video and pretty simple to follow, but wait till the end to see how this template looks after I've finished engraving it. So there's a couple different ways to find Xtool templates. One of my favorite ways is just to click on Xtool Creative Space and then come to this home page here. Then you can scroll down and see some projects that are recommended for you to use. So if you see one there you like, you can click on that. Or you can come over here to the left hand sidebar and hit Atom. When you click on Atom, it brings up this page where it kind of lets you filter down to what you're trying to look for. Whether that be coasters, mugs, ornaments, and then what the occasion is and what material you're wanting to use. So I don't want to use that right now. I just want to see what all Adam has to offer. So I can exit all these pop-up ads and then just look around a little bit. So they give you weekly ideas of different things to engrave. They have cool contests that you can enter in uh, for a chance to win credits for x Creative Space. Then they have some featured items and some different collections and things like that. Also, if you've used it before, as you can tell here, It'll give you a list of items that it thinks you might like. Since I mostly do woodworking, that's why the majority of mine are wood products. But I can come back up here to the top and click on templates. Once I get to the templates page, I can explore the templates that it recommends for me, or I can click on the specific type that I'd like to make. I'd love to make some home decor. So with this home decor, I can scroll down and see if I find one that catches my eye. Something that I think would be cool to engrave. So here's a Father's Day golfing engraving that I like pretty good. So once I find the one that I like, I can click on it. And it brings me here to this instruction page. So it says that it takes around 15 minutes for it to engrave. It shows that the recommended machine uh, for the speed and power that it will give you is the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt, which I have an Xtool D1 Pro 10 watt, so I know I might have to tweak the power a little bit. I do want to use the 3 millimeter basswood, so if all things are consistent, I can open in XCS, and that will open this document here in Xtool Creative Space. As you can see, this is pretty big, but I don't believe I'll make it that big. I'm just going to make it small to start off with. So here's what it looks like from the template. It shows the golf clubs, the golf bag, and all the letters. It has the letters on the inside scored, but the letters on the outside cut. So then you can place these letters on top of the scored letters on the inside of the golf bag. I don't really want to do that, so I can change this around any way that I see fit. So I'm going to remove these outside letters and then make the inside letters darker at a 70% power, 80 millimeters per second. So now that'll come up a little bit darker. And I want to change both the best dad and the bipar. Now let's look at the outside of the bag. It's at 100% power, 6 millimeter per second. Because I've used this basswood before, I know that it normally takes 7 millimeters per second and 2 passes. Since I've only got a 10 watt engraver rather than a 20 watt engraver, like this template was made for, I know that I'm going to have to use a little more power to get the correct result that I want. And now for the lines on the golf club. I might make it just a little bit darker as well. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I don't want to make this engraving so big so I can make it a little bit smaller. So I can select it and you notice here I have all parts selected, the lines on the golf clubs, the wording, and the bag itself. So then I can change the size of it. So I know that the piece of material that I'm going to engrave on is four inches by four inches. So I can change the largest of the two, whether the width or the height, and change it to 
five inches. That's how it makes the engraving quite a bit smaller. And just on a side note before we process this engraving, I can come over here to the templates button on the left sidebar and it will also bring up Adam, the same page that we were on just a few minutes ago. Those are two different ways to get on that program. Before it'll let me start this engraving, one thing that's a little odd is it says ignored on each one of these three items. So what I can do is click on them and where it says compound vector, I can click the output on. So now when I click off of it, notice the ignored is gone. So I need to do that on all three different items. Then I can process the engraving. Okay, here it shows the origin point, the laser spot. I can move the module head of the laser, anything really that I need to do just to get the engraving started. Shows an estimated time of three minutes, which I don't think is bad at all, especially since it's just going to be on a little uh, piece of material. So let's frame it up a few times using the framing button here. I normally like to slow it down real slow because I want to be able to see it. And once we get finished framing, we can see how the engraving will lay out on our piece of material. And then we can hit start and start the engraving. So let's run over to the engraver and see how the final product turns out. So here's my piece of basswood. I'm framing it up a couple times before I start this engraving. I've also got my practice material on a scrap piece of wood. That way when I cut through this engraving, it will cut through and land on my scrap piece of wood rather than my measurement wood underneath my engraver. One thing that I did change before I started this engraving the words Best Dad by Par were originally scored on the golf bag, but I changed it to where they would be engraved so that you could see them a little bit darker. I think in the original engraving where it was scored and then the pieces of material were cut out to put on top of them, I think that would have looked good. But just for this practice round, I thought why not just engrave it so it would be darker. So my engraving's finished and here's the final product. See how it just falls right off the original piece of material? It cut through it very cleanly and it looks good. The only thing I don't really like about it is how dark the lettering is. If I was to do it again, I would change the lettering to a little bit lighter. Then I would also stain the piece of material if I was trying to sell it or give it as a gift. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use the templates tool on Xtool Creative Space, and then also just showing you how to make just a, a random project, something on a piece of basswood material. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see some more great content on not just laser engraving, but crafts in general. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. So thanks for watching, and happy engraving!